I'm Damaris Jordan. I'm in Clark's Chapel Baptist Church studio and going to share one of my diaries. Um, this is going to be named Not a Failure. And um, it has great depth of meaning to me in my life. You know, we, we have a lot of ups and downs, don't we? We try things. Sometimes we succeed. Sometimes we don't. We have hope in being good at everything, but I guess that's just impossible, isn't it? So we have to face some disappointments along the way, and sometimes those um, feelings of guilt are not measuring up to standards. Whatever the rule of thumb might be that we're looking at, it can make us feel unworthy and, and very limited. So I want to share with you something God gave me um, a good many years ago now that changed my life. The scripture I want to share with you is from 1 John 3, 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. So if, if our heart condemns us, that's us condemning ourselves, um, we are putting more guilt and weight on us than even God wants us to have because all we've got to do is ask for forgiveness if that's needed or ask God to help us if we need to overcome something. Uh, those are the ways that God wants to help us. And then when we have a better sense of ourselves, we can then have confidence in God, not ourselves, not so very much as in Him. And then He gives us the strength and the power to do what we want we want to do, especially in a way that is serving him and blessing him and his kingdom. Um, <clears throat> so often, uh, God arrives on the scene for me. Uh, of course, we've been many years singing and we give testimony and we can be sharing something and David and I have, have talked about it where we can be saying something and it's almost like I'm standing over here watching myself and hearing what I have to say. And in those times we have agreed it's God taking control and he's wanting to use us to speak. And sometimes I think it is for other people, but sometimes truly it is that we are listening to what he has to say to us. And then it could be for everyone in the presence uh, of the uh, meeting that we're in or the, the circumstance that we're in. But God speaks um, very plain so many times and, and as a surprise too. Um, When something like this happens, um, there's such a sweet peace in your heart, mainly because of the presence of God, but then you recognize his voice and you recognize truth, and that's all he's going to speak. And so that definitely changes um, your, your situation, your circumstance, your own feeling about yourself in that moment. Um, some of you may or may not know, but um, I had a previous marriage before David, and I loved much. Um, it was um, a marriage that had many ups and downs, good times, but hard times as well. And after many years, the hard times began to outweigh the good, and soon it was uh, my love that suffered death. And um, I had prayed for a long, long time during that marriage for God to heal it, um, it didn't work out. And, you know, sometimes our prayers, um, it's not always up to God alone. And I, I spoke on this um, in the past two or three weeks in that our prayers are subject to the people we're praying for, the people that are in the circumstance too. And we've all got to be in one mind and one accord and want what God wants in order for sometimes God to be able to answer prayer. But um, in that particular situation, um, the marriage was not healed, and uh, he became very discouraged trying to live a Christian life, and um, his church relationship, um, he just gave up on it, and he chose to abandon God and live a different lifestyle. As long as he was trying uh, to build a relationship with God and uh, our Christian fellowship of friends, I had hope because there was something to base that hope on. But then once hope was gone, it was more than I could live through. 
as I saw things drift further and further away from having a godly home and a place, a good place for my children. Um, it became very evident and even voiced that he had decided the road he was going to take and that I could choose mine. And so I did. I chose what was best for me and the children. And I chose to uh, stand by God, depending on him to stand by me. And um, this was a very, very hard thing to do, but it was very necessary. The feeling of failure in that situation was almost more than I could, I could handle. But God was good. He was there for me, and he, he kept me going. He gave me strength to face every day. As I looked at myself as a failure, I knew that many friends and family were confused because there, there's things you just don't tell other people. So they were not aware of a lot of my struggles, a lot of the problems that I, that I was facing. One day, when it was a, a very discouraging day, it seemed to me, God spoke to me. And he gave me the words that I was not a failure in such a way that I had to believe him. There was, there was no way I could doubt it because of, of the context of what he said. And I'm going to share that with you. This is what he said to me and something that I have shared with many people since then. God has given the world the gift of his son. He has a plan for everyone to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord and save them from hell, from the wages of sin. But everyone doesn't receive because they have a choice to make. And everyone doesn't choose Jesus Christ as a Savior in their life. It is a free choice, and, and they reject the gift of life is what happens. So when they don't take the gift that God wants to give... Would you consider him a failure? I know that it, it does it does not seem real to, to even consider that God could be a failure. But this is what he gave me as a comparison to my life was that some things that you have the best of intentions, but they just cannot be carried out. God wants to save the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that everyone, everyone, but it is up to the person. So when God wants to give life to everyone and not everyone receives it, does that make God a failure? I know that it does not because it is his intention to save the world, but he will not force life on everyone. God is successful in his offer in his offer, because it is a plan that he's made and, and Jesus fulfilled. And those of us that have received it, we know the reality of it. And we just thank God that we had the opportunity to receive salvation. I want you to listen to this and think about it. Living in this world with other people who set weights and balances according to them can give us false readings of who we are. And that can happen in relationships, individual relationships, personal private relationships. It can happen in society. It can happen in church. It can happen in the workplace. People are guilty of expecting things and putting that weight on us that, that is uh, unfair. And then when we succumb to it, we accept it over us as, as an authority, then we begin to have to measure ourselves toward that. And it can make us read ourselves as something that we're, that we're not truthfully seeing who we are. If we base the value of our life according to this, we can come up short of expectations. Our focus should be on God's purpose in our lives as his willing servant. There lies our success. I think every measure, of course, aren't we happy and thankful? Aren't we so very thankful that God looks on the intent of the heart? 
The Bible says that, and it's a reassurance to us that we don't have to condemn our heart for the things that we've allowed, the choices that we've made. Not when we can go to God, repent, and ask for his forgiveness of any shortcomings or any acts of of, um, sinful ways, and we can make it right with him, and we move on. We start anew and afresh. And this is how we measure our life. Uh, We measure to his word, and I think, you know, the way that we serve him, the way that we do that is by showing our love for him. And his word says if we love him, we keep his commandments. So obedience is one of the things that we uh, go by. So as long as we're obedient to his word and his guidelines for our life, and we turn to him and ask him, are we doing this right? Are we, are we doing what you'd have us to do? Please show us. If we'll always let him be our yardstick, our measuring point, then I think that we can forget about being a failure. There are things that we won't succeed in, but that does not mean we're a failure. I hope that you'll look at God and, and realize the intent that he has had to give life to the whole world. And if you've received him, oh, thank him right now. Thank him for that precious offering of life and salvation. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, realize that he wants to offer it to everyone, and you're one of those everyones that he wants to reach out to today. I pray that you will find your way to know who Jesus Christ is He is the only way, the one way God's provided for us to have eternal life with him. And I'm I'm looking forward to that day. Um, It's a life here that I've, I've loved, even with its hardships, because you grow through those. And I want to live as long as he wants me to live here. I'm looking forward to that time. I have a a wonderful marriage relationship and family and friends and church community, and I I want to be here as long as he permits. But there's a longing to go where he has provided a place for me, and he will do the same for you. I hope this has blessed you, and if you're feeling uh, inadequate in any way, I hope you'll, you'll look to God and see how that sometimes we just can't make things happen. Our intention was good, but it just didn't get to turn out like we wanted it to. So we we find a new path, and um, we just let God guide us. So God bless you, and let your light shine.